over to the cloud. This meeting is being recorded. Hi. Hi guys, it's Mary from Glimpse and Beyond. Welcome back. Guess who we have again? He was so gracious to come back. Ismail Perez, yay. Hi, yay. So, yeah, hi, hi. Hi, hi I was like, hi. Melissa, you guys all know her. We'd be lost without her on this channel, so. Okay, so Solar Flash, we've got about 10 questions. So I'm gonna just take a couple from there. Okay. Uh, let me interject for just a minute. Okay, Melissa. unless you have one. We're, okay. No, we're answering some people's questions from YouTube from the, his last visit on here that they had. So we asked you guys for questions. We're gonna get through as many as we can. Sounds good. So, all right, so um, after the solar flash, are we gonna wake up in our house? What happens when we step out of the house? Same neighborhood, how do we adapt to this new earth? Uh, due to the uh, changes that are taking place in our bodies, um, I believe that we're going to be sleeping for about two to three days nonstop just to acclimate to the new bodies that we're going to be in, um, using after the activation of our fifth dimensional or fourth dimensional body, depending on where we end up. And so it's, it's going to be required to sleep at least two to three days. So after we wake up, we're going to feel much different. We're going to feel less lighter. We're going to feel less dense. Uh, we're also going to be um, using more of our potential, genetic potential, um, mind capacity. So many people are going to be in tune with uh, what's going on. Uh, they're going to be a psychic. Um, um, some people are going to be communicating telepathically uh, across the world with other loved ones. Um, so we're going to definitely be a whole new different species after the solar flash. But there has to be at least 48 to 76 hours of rest in order to uh, acclimate to the new body. Okay. Um, and then, <laughs> all right, I'll just ask this one. Um, will the result of the solar flash immediately transport us to new earth or will it take a while? You just answered that. Will it happen if we're, what will happen if we're driving or in airplanes or that kind of thing? How does that work? Um, I think for the most part, um, we're gonna, if you're on an airplane or in a car, you're definitely going to see like a, like the entire sky become luminous. Yeah. Um, at which point I think, you know, people are going to be suspended in time where all of a sudden everything's going to stop. Like if time's going to yeah. stop and then people are going to be able to see things for what they really are. In other words, the veil of forgetfulness, the veil that separates our dimension from the higher dimensions is going to be fully lifted. And yeah. then people are going to see the interconnectivity of everything. And then when they see that, all of a sudden they're going to go back into reality, but it's going to be a little bit different. You know, they're still going to be driving the car, but they're just going to be more aware. They're still going to be on an airplane or on a train, but things are going to be so much different. Things mm -hmm. are going to be all the way different. Yes. Awesome. So um, on to health, ascension health. What, what can we do now uh, to prepare our bodies so that we can uh, integrate and acclimate to that more effectively? How can we detox or you know, special foods? You know, if you have any suggestions. Uh, yes, um, try to uh, only give yourself organic, uh, raw living foods, nothing with chemicals, pesticides or hormones. Stay away from all genetically modified foods. Stay away from sugar, uh, starch, um, stuff like that. You know, uh, toxins that come from alcohol and drugs. You know, if you could, if you have an issue with alcoholism, or if you have an issue with tobacco or any sort of drug, uh, this is actually the time to really just release all that because your body needs to be purified. Um, yes. Depending on how purified your body becomes. Uh, you will be able to hold more light because the solar flash is about absorbing all this new light energy photonic gamma ray frequencies that are going to be, you know, feeding our cells at the cellular level. Mm -hmm. And so if you have toxins in your body, if you have heavy metals, it's going to be very hard for all that energy to be absorbed by your cellular structure. Mm -hmm. So it's best to keep yourself clean, drink tons of water, eat healthy, organic living foods, mm -hmm. um, you know, exercise. Uh, as much as kind you of can. like the keto diet, right? 
uh, keto, well, you know, there's different types of diets, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I've yeah, never like raw, nothing processed. Okay. Uh, yeah. Nothing processed. You know, your, your body's a living temple. So make mm -hmm. sure you feed it optimal fuel. Okay. And, um, not to go negative, but asking just about, um, for those that have not had their energetic implants removed yet through whatever means, um, meditations or upgrades or any of that kind of thing. Um, will that be eliminated automatically when these changes take place and, or what they, what can they do before that happens to help them facilitate their ascension? Well, the energetic implants have already been removed okay. for humanity. Yeah, yeah. In order to allow the other 10 strands of DNA to rebundle and come online. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Um, all right. About family. Uh, um, I have a question here. Uh, our family that we are related to now through DNA and genetics, how far up in the dimensions do they still play a role in our lives, like our present lives? Um, because we become one with everything the higher that we go. So where does our family play a role in our lives the higher we ascend? How does that work? Well, depending on their soul contract and where they are in their level of awakening and consciousness, um, even if you go into a higher dimension and say a cousin or a nephew or a niece goes into a lower dimension, uh, you're still going to be able to pop into that lower dimension at will. The only difference is that they won't be able to pop into your dimension. So, you know, they're still going to be there and they're just going to be ascending in increments at a time. Whereas the old souls that are down here, the celestials in human form, you know, many of them are going to go beyond the fifth dimension and up all, of the, all the way to the 12. So, yeah, there's going to be a 12 dimensional or now I'm sorry, now we're entering the 13th dimension. So there's going to be a 13 dimensional coexistence of different earths. We're going to have Terra Earth in dimensions four, five and six. Yeah. We're going to have Gaia Earth in seven, eight and nine and Aramaitina, which was the original Lyra Avion 10, 11 and 12 right. before it was destroyed by the Draco during the first galactic war, which I cover in detail in my book. And then finally, yeah. Sophia in dimensions 13, 14 and 15. So we're going to have those, you know, right all dimensional spheres, all coexisting at the same time. Yeah. Yes. I'm so glad you explained that because lately I've been seeing everything um, in 15s. Like I could see 15 different timelines at once and they're asking me questions. And I'm like, all right, I got to see where you are. So thank you. That, that really, now that explains it. The, um, the word Aramatina and Aurora, they're, are they one in the same earth planet uh, and uh 10th 11th and 12th dimension or is you mentioned it's the planet and there's some confusion i guess i have um stargates going from the 10th 11th and 12th from here i thought the stargate well, was called aramatina but I'm, I'm it's the stargates are called uh, the stargates of amenti and, and this planet has yeah amenti okay. so the stargates of amenti connect all the way actually not to sophia before i, I used to just connect to aramatina but because the earth is getting ready to embody her higher self, which is the spirit of Sophia, the great mother of all, um, it's going to be uh, plugged in into all 15 dimensional frequencies. Okay. 15. 15. I know it explains so much. I'm so <laughs> thankful for that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. So let's get into some super abilities here. Um, so we have a question. I'd like to ask if we will be able to fly physically in the 5D world. I've always known since I was four years old that I should be able to fly and teleport around and felt deeply saddened to be here without my ability. Absolutely. Yes. That's the beauty of, of re being restored back into a fifth dimensional being is that all these superhuman abilities are going to be coming back to us. And it's not about trying to figure out how to get to that. It's about just going within and remembering because all that information is stored within our cellar data. Okay. Um, and so you said fifth dimensional, does that apply to the, like, let's say 60 or higher? Um, how does that, the super soul, the, you know, the, well, the higher, you go, like, right. The higher you go in dimensions, the more abilities you're going to be, you're going to have. So like, say for instance, a, a being that's coming from the 10, 11 and 12 dimensions would appear to be even more powerful than the being that's coming from the seven, eight or ninth dimension and so on and so forth. The most powerful beings in our multiverse are known as the Rishis, which are cosmic entities, those that have reunited with everything that, that is beyond the multiverse. Um, they exist in 13, 14, and 15. 
So to give you an example of what a cosmic, a cosmic Rishi is, is Metatron. Metatron, the Archangel, he's considered a cosmic being. Yes, it's very clear. Okay. Uh, about the animals, could you let oh, us know? Um, yeah, oh, we have animals. Um, where are they from? What will happen to them during these changes? Will we see them again in the form we knew them? What, yeah. Even the animals are ascending. So yes, they're just going to be at a higher level of intelligence uh, where people and animals are actually going to have full-blown telepathic conversations in the fifth dimensional earth. I so was the, just saying. Yeah, the animals yeah. are coming with us. Good. I didn't, Mary, you had a vision yesterday? Oh, yes. The live list. The whole yeah. part, is a zoo did, or somewhere? Did you see that? Did you say that? Or was it one of your? Not a Zoom. It's just we're all going to tell them. Yeah. Like, zoo. Zoo. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, like we're all going to talk to each other. It's going to be great. Yes. Um. Okay. Yeah. And I swear my cat already does it, so we're good. <laughs> already ahead. Oh um, my God! Yes. Okay. The bifurcation split timelines. So we have a few questions. So I'm just going to ask you one. Um. After we go to 5D, will we lose memory of anyone who chose to go to the other negative AI timelines? As advanced beings, why does this occur? Would we maintain our ability to read the Akashic records such as Dolores Cannon's work? That's like a bunch of- That's like four questions. All right, go ahead. Yeah. yeah I'm like, wow. All, <laughs> All right. right. <laughs> Whatever you want to respond to. <laughs> It's like three different questions in one. Can you ask? Can you ask the first question? Okay, first part of it. Um, after we go to five D, will we lose the memory of anyone who chose other the negative AI timeline? Will we lose the memory of that relationship? Uh, the AI, yes. Once we go into five D, we're no longer going to be affected by the AI, AI timeline. Although we are going to be aware of it. Yeah, and our relatives that or family or friends that might have decided to go there, will we? You know, well, we're going to be like superheroes as we pop into their realm. You know, we're going to be the ones that are going to be. Yes. Uh, that thing. Yeah. Yeah. So in the future, there's going to be two types of human 3.0. Uh, there's going to be a timeline where it's just uh, angelic humanoids, fifth dimensional reality, no AI. Uh, there's going to be a, a, a false matrix, AI matrix, time loop, artificial yes. intelligence. That's going to be only inhabited by cyborgs. And then there's going to be an in-between where the people that are in the middle of that are going to be um, protected by those that are coming in from the fifth dimension. So um, in that type of reality, we're going to have, you know, angelic humans or humans with supernatural abilities. And then we're also going to have cyborgs and AIs and everything in between. Right. Oh, I, right. That sounds exciting. Okay. Oh, yeah. Buckle <laughs> up. It's not Buckle just up. <laughs> All right. So, uh, and then I know you heard this question on another uh, interview recently, but like some people are like, are we there yet? When are we going to get there? <laughs> What's it well, looking like? <laughs> some of us are already there consciously because, you know, first we ascend through our mind. Once we do that, our body follows. So for the collective, it's a matter of hitting that critical mass period where I think it takes about 10% of the population to be there mentally uh, in order to, you know, cause the shift for everyone else to be in a fifth dimensional unity consciousness uh, reality. Um, and then, of course, with the, you know, signaling of the solar flash, our bodies are going to be transforming. But I think it's a two-way process. The solar flash, because our sun is intelligent, is waiting for enough of us to be there mentally. Once enough of us are, be are, are there mentally, that's when the sun is going to transform. That's when it's going to release the final signal to transform us into this new physical reality. Okay. Someone had a question about what do you know what the percentage is now of the awareness? Uh, it's, I think it's at nine point seven percent. It's almost there. It's a little. We're, bit there yet. we're like we're like this this <laughs> this close. I'm like great. It can happen this at the end of summer, beginning of fall. You know, sometime before the year is over. We'll see. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So then I keep uh, September. They keep telling me September, and I'm like, I don't know. We'll see. We'll <laughs> see. Sort of like sliding around. So, I know. Um, so the solar flash in 4D and 5D and the new, can you clarify how the new monetary system will function in 4D? I think it was 4D that you said it would be the only 4D thing. It wouldn't be happening in 5D because they're beyond money in 5D or that kind of stuff. Right. Yes. Uh, exactly. 
Okay, so then they want to know when would that new system kick in before or after the solar flash? I think it's going to happen all at the same time. Yeah. I think the solar yeah. flash is going to mark the the uh, the end of the dark and or the dark age and the beginning of the golden age, which oh, is going yes. to be um, seen as a reset uh, by yes. the you know alliance, the white hats implementing a system that's workable for everyone. Right. Yes, like a reboot. A reboot. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, all right, baby angels. So this is where the, this is where this top couple from them. Uh, can you please give a brief summary of galactic order? And I know you cover this in your book, and you don't have to get into too much detail, but only as it relates to the dimensions. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're angel centric. So oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. So, okay. so uh, can you give a summary of the galactic order? I guess in this. Uh, uh, and in this whole universe, the 12 dimensions, in relation to the angelic hierarchy, which I understand they have nine orders of archange of our angels, mm -hmm. where do they fit into the cosmological structure? Those are the non-incarnates. Those are the ones that are uh, helping create our source from, um, from the non-physical incarnation state in order to assist those that decided to incarnate. So we have those that are participating, which are in embodiment, you know, on different levels of reality. And then we have those that are not incarnated that are just there on the sidelines, just overseeing and protecting those that did incarnate. So, you know, we could perceive the galactics as angels because anything beyond the fifth dimensional level of reality to us is angelic, you know? Um, yeah. we, we see, and the higher we go in real in, in dimensions, the more angelic we become, the less dense, the more light. The lower we go in dimensions, the more denser and physical we become. And I describe that in my book as well. I talk about how, you know, technically all matter is, it's just a, a vibrational frequency of the same light energy spectrum vibrating at different rates. So the higher you go, the more subtle and, and the more immortal matter becomes. And the lesser you go, the more gross, cross uh, and dense matter becomes, you know, as to why it feels so solid in this dimension. But, yeah. uh, but uh, physicality exists all the way to the 12th dimension. Beyond that, it's just pure energy. And so uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. So the, high, the spiritual hierarchy or celestial administration um, exists on every level of reality. You know, within yeah. galactic systems, we have what we called uh, the councils of light that is overseen by the council of 12. Well, now it's going to be the council of 13 because we're moving into right. the 13th cycle. Um, the council of 12 has always operated from the center of every galaxy where the guardians reside. And, and they are at the head of all, you know, federation councils and, and a high federation council. So in our galaxy, Sirius, Sirius is, yep. you know, high council of our federation, but every galaxy has one. Now above the federation, we have different councils or, or different uh, orders. Um, and this yep. is where the angels come into play because the angels all exist right. beyond the 11th dimension, obviously. Yes. And yeah. so what we have is, you know, we have the council of 12, we have the council of nine, uh, we have the council of five, uh, and these are different uh, celestial administrations that are governing the different realms. Um, the okay. highest level of councils are known as the um, order of the gold or the yeah. emerald. Um, yeah. yeah, the emerald is the third level of council. That's also known as the Yeah. base. Yeah, yeah the, the, the one angel that was asking is like, she's kind of like in the fourth dimension of angels and she wants to be in the gold and she doesn't know if she can do it she's in the by being in the fourth dimension you're in the ruby order you're serving the Cal yes. council of alcyon which is the parents okay. of the sun um you know beyond the ruby order then you go into the order of uh amethyst and then you yep. go into the order of emerald emerald okay. is the fourth dimension yeah and then yeah, the so the have the all right okay Oh, that's fascinating. They're cheering you, but yeah, they just, they wanted to know that. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> I get the weirdest questions. Sorry. <laughs> this last time you went into the five orders and mm -hmm. you talked about Ruby, which we hadn't heard and you, you brought in silver because we knew about uh, amethyst. Uh, yep, and gold. gold. And yeah. Yep. It's fascinating. Yep, this is great. Um, thank you. You're welcome. So, um, so again, baby angels, um, star races how many times have the pleiadians been around with us and when do we first connect to and become aware of them well the pleiadians are our parent race and, and, and in turn they're our great grandparent races the lyra the lyrans yeah so um they've 
the galactic lyrans and pladians have seeded this planet many times we're actually part of the fourth seeding um and this is also known as the final seeding uh, in which right. uh, um what is known as the third earth grant experiment is coming to completion with the ascension of our species so right. the, for, the fourth seeding is it was supposed to be a, a success so we've we've been associated with the pladians from the beginning of time because the pladians are in a way you know and the lyrans are grandparents they are our parents mm -hmm. and one of the things that i talked about in kabbalah guru is that um, the what distinguished the ancient israelites or those that came from the line of abraham and sarah as opposed to the other tribes uh, that existed okay. during those days is that the israelites uh were the continuation of those that carry the highest blood concentration of pladian yeah. and lyran blood as opposed okay. to the canaanites who are contaminated by the draco blood that came from babylon yeah right, right okay okay thank you um, so is there a difference between angelic humans which you just talked about the bloodline mm -hmm. and earthlings right so the humans that are evolving up from you said they're ones coming from the way down they're in, infusing or they're in in um involving, in anchoring yeah, involution, which is just creating this. And then, then there's the evolution end coming from the other, right? And we meet in the middle somewhere and evolve. So uh, is there a difference between angelic human beings and earthlings? And what is it? Um, the difference is that the angelic human beings are the older souls that have already graduated and completed the entire ascension process. Yeah. Uh, the earth souls are... The, the, the newbie souls, the ones that started at yes. the bottom and are just gradually going up in increments. So um, at the point where dis the descent of spirit meets the evolution of physical shelf, what we call, you know, biological bodies, uh, yes. meets uh, when Homo sapiens sapiens were engineered. And that yes. explains our race. You know, we are the final product of that as well. Okay. Um, all right. Now this can competing opinions. Um, I have two people here asking about Elena Danan and her uh, take on Enki. So do you want to comment on that at all? Do you know what her position is? She's, you know, saying that Enki was the pot, you know, it's opposite, right? You know, uh, because the, uh, tam the tablets were tampered with. Exactly. So and, you know, the thing is, everything we've been taught is wrong, including the translation of the Sumerian tablets. So everyone's under the spell that Enki was the good guy. And I'm getting a lot of negative feedback because I'm speaking the truth. You know, I'm trying to break people away from the program, right? Because that's still part of the program. Yeah. Yes. But um, the original Elena Danon was actually murdered and was replaced by a droid. So um, because Enki uh, did side did uh, choose to side with the AI God in the Orion, you know, AI timeline. Um, she's pushing the idea that he's good because in, in the sense, uh, they want to bring in this AI timeline when, when Enki makes his appearance, which is now an artificial cyborg. Enki is no longer organic. The original Enki, um, he was forbidden to go to the outskirts of our universe because the outskirts of the universe was a zone where the AI had already affected many species through these nanites. The nanites are also known as mind eaters, where they literally take over your nervous system and your cerebral and your body, and they just, you know, they overcome you and they eat you from the inside out, and then they make you their host. Well, so that's yes. what ended up happening, right. happening to Enki. So when he came back, he was already a cyborg. He was no longer organic. Um, yes. And so that's why they've been promoting him as the good guy, because they're really trying to push this AI timeline. So um, yeah. Elena Danan has been compromised. I'm sorry, was murdered. Thank you. And was replaced by a droid. So that, and if you guys don't believe me, just watch her latest um, videos or all her videos. She does. It's hard for her to express feelings, and she looks very synthetic. Right. You know, synthetic. Because I always get that she's gray. I've never watched her before, but I'm like, she's not. She's not bad. She's not good, but she's leaning more bad now. And people don't like me for saying that. So that just confirmed it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So um, last time we spoke, uh, you talked about the Mormon church. Uh, the original beginning of it was Pleiadian seated or ideology, or maybe Atlantean even. Arcturian. Uh, Arcturian, sorry. Okay. So the question is, um, today, uh, what role, if any, has the Mormon church had in preparing 
people for the solar flash and ascension. It's like in a current state, but earlier it was more accurate. Well, with, within the um, teachings of the church, they do talk about the solar flash, but they call it as a great uh, pur purging that's coming from the sun. Yeah. They say that um, this purging is going to uh, eliminate all the wicked and uplift the righteous, the just, mm -hmm. which is correct. That, that's what the prophecy stated. So that church yeah. uh, kept record of the original prophecies. Okay. Okay. Um, no. And they're also extensions of the Y hats, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. The church. Yeah. The church was um be before it was organized in 1832 by Joseph Smith, uh, who was a Freemason. Uh, he took a lot of those uh, records that stem from the Knights Templars, and that's how the church yeah. was able to inherit everyone's genealogical records going back to thousands of years. And they were entrusted as keepers of the genealogical records from the Cabal, and those are resting within the Rocky Mountains of Utah. Uh, in, in uh, safeguarded in a vault and they're only to yes. be released once the ascension takes place and that way everyone's going to know who you know what tribe they're from because everybody on this planet is part of one of the 12 tribes of israel except those that came from canaan or canaanites which is babylon right. or you, you know cabal families right, right. Okay. and they actually migrated to palmyra new york and that's where they started yeah. the whole mormon religion in new york state so that's interesting interesting thank you for right near the finger lakes interesting um so the question of blood types isn't even going to matter because we're going to find out who's what where afterward oh yeah it's uh the whole concept of, of bloodline is is has been very very important to the church because the church knows about the original descendants of jesus and mary magdalene but they, they don't talk about it but they they no. know that it is through their descendants that um you know um, this new age or this initiation into the millennium or, or the thousand years of peace would, would come about when, when those descendants rise. When they, so rise. They, they kind of always protected who those descendants were as to why those records have been stored in the Rocky Mountains, safeguarded, you know, without having any, there's no, they're, it, they're incapable of being penetrated. Right. You know, they're very secured in, in, in vaults that are very locked. Okay. Yep. Um, so the book, and then I want to get into some twin flame questions to uh, get toward the end of this, um, the book. Uh, so there are some languages uh, that are priority translations for you. And then beyond that, hopefully, um, depending on what happens when, right? So you want to tell us which languages your book, and I know that you have a few editions uh, coming out and, and new material and you want to talk about some of that? Yeah, you just pulled up the book. Sure, yeah. I'm going to be doing a second edition where um, I'm actually going to be correcting all the misspellings and all the uh, the different grammar uh, mistakes that m the editor, the final, no, not the editor, the person who I paid to format it in order for it to be accepted by Amazon switched everything around. Yes. The original okay. editor had everything corrected, everything right. But the formatter kind of did it in a way where that person twisted it you know, misscrambled certain words and, and it in turn, it made me look bad. So, you know, I just wanted to point out that that book was edited in, in its original context, but then later it was modified right before it went into publication. And I think that was deliberately done by a person. It who, was, it really yeah, was. Right? Yeah. Really was. That's what I was told. Yeah, it really was. They just, yeah. Because it was such dense information, you know, mm -hmm that um, they, they wanted to, to not, uh, how can I say, they, they, they wanted to taint it. They wanted to, you know, corrupt it in a way where a lot of the, the phrases were misplaced. Correct. You know, there was a lot yes. of grammatical Yeah, errors. they wanted to create confusion. Okay, confusion. Exactly. So mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing another edit. And this time before we say yes to the publication, I'm going to actually hire a different formatter who's, who's okay. not a fundamentalist Christian because, you know, a person was a fundamentalist Christian. And I'm sure when she read, that manuscript, she said, hey, this goes against the Bible. I better mess with it, you know, but again. But that's um, not true either, the Bible. So we got that too. They don't know that, yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm going to add another chapter, which is going to be a segue to the next book. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. And that'll be in English, Spanish? In English in September. And then by the end of the year, hopefully the Spanish translation would be available. And then I'm going to work on getting it into Chinese and then other languages eventually. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, okay, so we're gonna go right into Twin Flames now. Um, 
would we be meeting or reunited with Twin Flames uh, after, before, after, during the Flash or Solar Flash? And um, that pertains to the energy of the connection being able to help the Earth. I think they're asking, aren't they more powerful when they're put together in pairs and can't they help? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, because every Twin Flame, every star seed that is, uh, has a Twin Flame, is uh, symbolically representing the union of the cosmic Christ with the cosmic Sophia coming back into balance and integration. Uh, and so there's a 3D kind of a way of looking at that monogamy. Is right. monogamy preferred or disregarded in the higher dimensions? Monogamy only exists up to the fifth or sixth dimension. Beyond the sixth dimension, as we become a social memory complex, we become part of a collective, at which right. point, you know, males and females um are able to not only just be in one relationship but to be in multiple relationships because at that level of reality they see everyone as one as one and the same there is no jealousy right. there is no um you know territory or well, this is my territory and all that mentality is squashed and so beyond the six dimensional level of reality um it, it's more like a plural you know plural yep. relationships yeah okay awesome um and you just, well, okay. I guess you kind of answered that. Uh, can you explain the, to the audience why it's important for people to meet up with their twin flames at this time on planet Earth to help raise because the vibration? It'll, it'll help not only raise the vibration, but it'll also help bring in the solar flash faster. Yeah, it brings up the light. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, what can people do to prepare themselves for the reunion with their twin flames? Uh, the best way to do it, just, you know, stay uh, celibate and, and know that the time is coming for you to reunite with your other half. Uh, don't be giving away your sexual energy just to anyone. Um, mm -hmm. Because for those that wait, when even if it happens after the ascension, I guarantee you that you will be reunited with your twin flame. So patience is key here for those that haven't yet found their twin flame. You now be patient and, and um, you will be reunited with your twin flame. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, where is your twin flame? And is she also a super soldier in the higher dimensions? I think so. I think she is. Yeah, she's got to be the opposite yes. of me or, or my counterpart, you know. She is. Yeah. She's like your Wonder Woman. They're showing me. They're showing me Wonder Woman from the Wonder 70s. I'm old. I'm sorry. The invisible plane. I'll take, okay. I'll take Wonder Woman. That's awesome. Linda Carter. Linda Carter, Wonder Woman. <laughs> Not the new one. Okay. All right. Linda Carter. Uh, uh, are you in communication? This is on a topic of loved ones and guidance. Are you in communication with any of your family members in future Earth or in the future, you know, in the dimensions? Uh, do they help you when you need guidance? I am. I am in constant communication with my uh, Lyran family and also um, the Elohim um, cluster of family known as the Azurites who work very closely with me. Thank you. Um, and what advice can you give to people here about meditation and inner communication with our spiritual guidance teams, ancestors, relatives, angelics, ETs, and all beings heretofore in the unemployment line that you met, referenced. I love that reference. For us to ask them for help. They haven't been asked enough. What, what can we do? Part of uh, using our power is, is uh, commanding, commanding and willing and invoking the help of our spiritual family or our spiritual group that, that is a part of our team, you know, in the other dimension, yeah. whether they be spirit guides, ancestors, they're all working together and they're all waiting for you to invoke them and uh, set the intention for them to do the work for you. That's how powerful we are. Even the archangels are meant to serve us. So, Amazing. Yeah. Okay, um, we have how many more minutes with you, uh, Ishmael? I skipped a bunch of questions just to make uh, sure we, we have. have about 18 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. We got a few. We'll go back. Um, someone had a question about uh, Master Kuan Yin uh, and Chinese origins. Can, can, do you have any knowledge of uh, the Chinese uh, heritage there they said bloodlines but i think it was a little bit more spiritual than just the bloodlines um about master kuan yin 
Okay. Yeah, Ascended Master Kuan Yin um, represents the uh, lineage, the angelic lineage that went through China. So the angelic lineage not only came through, through to us through the Mediterranean or Mesopotamia, but it also went through China and India through Krishna's descendants. Uh, so we have the masters of the East, and then we have the masters of the West, the mystics of the West, and the masters of the East that collectively have been guiding and directing the evolution from the higher dimensions. And they are known as the great white or light brotherhood of sisterhood and brotherhood. The, the way, I don't want to call them white because people think it's skin color. The, the great white brotherhood of both brother of yes. sisters and the brothers of sorrow. There you go. That's what they're called. Yep. Yep. That's a great way. Thank you for describing it. It's so yeah. hard. People ask me all the time and I'm like, I can't explain it. So and it's in his book. It, yeah. Good. And he has a course. <clears throat> I'm in the course tomorrow night. He'll be talking in detail about galactic history. Course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Ooh, I'm going to describe the different exciting. types of uh, advanced space age societies from planetary to cosmic and everything in between. It's just amazing. <laughs> so take the course by the book. And I know a lot of our questions are, you know, related to uh, thing details that you will find out. <clears throat> um, split. Okay. Ascension in the 144,000. Who will these special people be? And will they be twin flames uh, in pairs? Uh, will they be scientists, world teachers, counselors, New Republic, lawyers, uh, natural law, whatever they're going to how is that going to work out? 144,000. Well, the 144,000 are the core of the Star Sea nations. They are the ascended masters and ladies of light that have embodied once again to help usher in the fifth golden age. So we're all going to find out who they are, but I guarantee you that they are living among us. Yes. They are living among yep. us. Yep. Okay. They're going to yes, rise. They They're going to rise. Yep. That's, that's, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, See if I have any more here. Attention health. Okay, Ishmael. What are the heart palpitations about many are experiencing, in your opinion? Is it related to EMFs, electromagnetic frequencies on Earth, radiation, Wi-Fi, etc., or is it related to something else? I believe uh, it's related to the ascension symptoms because Thank our you. body is uh, changing at the molecular level, and so. Um, sometimes uh, the changes manifest in the form of, you know, heart palpitations, uh, back pain, neck pain, migraine headaches, yep. um, lethargy during the day. You know, you just don't have no energy, just want to nap. Those are all symptoms that your body's changing. So I wouldn't worry about the EMF waves. Um, those Wi-Fi towers, they no longer have an effect on us. They only have an effect on, on two-strand DNA humans. So, you know, we're yeah. already operating with three or four strands of DNA. Some of us even have the fifth strand already hacked. Yeah. Thank you. Because I was, they keep showing me like adding almost like the strand and they keep building on it. And I'm like, all right, okay. They're so knitting. that explains it. They're yes, <laughs> they are. We're knitting. Here we go. Um, okay. Uh, now, someone's asking about light language. Um, Ascension activations and light language. So what does it mean when one is compelled to write down a sequence of symbolic writings? I heard that it is assisting my awakening and DNA activation and that I don't need to know what it means right now. I have never had the impulse to do this before. That's the person asking the question. So it's, um, it's part of the activation process. The name of the light language that is being used across the multiverse is called Kailanta. Kailanta. That's light language. And so when you hear many Arcturians or uh, star people talking about, you know, they, they talk in this like different language, that's what they're speaking. It's a language that cannot be deciphered by the dark side. It could only be understood by the beings of light. It's interesting that they'd have them invisible right in that. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm, I'm working. With Sorry, that one was above my pay grade. Like they tell me when they don't want to answer me, they're like, it's above your pay grade. I'm like, all right. <laughs> It's not over his. I know. That's why I was so excited. He had the answer. <laughs> wow. Um, I'm back up into the solar flash again. Uh, Any more on the twin flame thing or no? Oh, I'll go back. I didn't know if we had a lot on that because I keep getting it in the chat. Oh, well, I, I had 
I'll go back down there. That I had them. I'm sorry. Okay. Monogamy. That's when flames. We talked about the meeting up before or after. Yep. Um, why it's important for them. Um, yep. Is there something else the angels want to ask him about that? They just want everybody to know it's like super important. You're going to find them. It's almost going to, they keep showing me it's like magnetic. Like you're not going to be able to resist. It's like magnetic. And then it's a big, huge spark. Like you can't, you can't make it up and you won't even have to question it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So even if yeah. they're not like all caught up and they haven't done all the clearing, the energy work, the healing work, no matter what, that's going to happen. It could still happen anyways. Yes. Regardless. I okay. Did that. So nobody has to, you know, in terms of preparation, just do what you feel, but it's going to happen when it's the right time. It's going to happen. Right. Yeah. Right. This is part of the bigger, uh, a bigger movement. It's yes. the mission. It's the mission. <laughs> Okay. Harry, I think that's it. I think we got through all of them. That's amazing. Good. Amazing. Is, is there anything else that you had as well? Um, well, um, again, you know, a lot of people are thinking that, because, um, you know, I, I came into the scene like within the last few weeks and yep. people are confused as to why all of a sudden I'm everywhere. So they are assuming that I'm being promoted by the cabal or that I am a cyborg or He's not you guys. <laughs> Sorry. And, I'm just like, they had yeah. me interject. That, so go ahead. So I just want to let people know that um, I raised a family. I raised a 22 year old daughter who is now um, getting her bachelor's at a university as a screenwriter, I'm raising a 16 year old son who is a junior in high school. Um, I have a terminally ill wife who um, is battling four stage kidney failure so, oh, I've been, you know, I've been managing and, and um, balancing everything out. You know, I've been a family man for, for many years. And when I mentioned that I took 20 years off to become a hermit, I actually did have a job because many people were asking, well, who supported him when he was doing all this research? Well, you know, I worked during the day. When I came home at night, I changed diapers and wrote and did research. And that's all I dedicated right. my life to, you know, raising my kids and being um, in or being a an instrument of divine, you know, light in order to gather the information um, that I wrote in my book, Our Cosmic Origin. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that because that's, that's a amazing. side of you we have not heard. Yeah. And, um, I'm glad you let everyone know because, uh, you know, regardless of the typos or whatever, nothing in that book, even though you might have been sabotaged, the line of thought and the heart if you read that book with your heart and your intuition, you can feel how it's, it's divinity speaking through Ishmael. It's his higher self. It's the team. You can it totally tell is. that it's yes. the real deal. So whether it's you're reading the edition that's there now or the one that comes later, the information is there and it's, it's everyone's responsibility, each one of us to process it and stand up and get, get ready you know, help him, yeah. help, help the mission, help all the, the light forces that are here and, and, you know, get it together so we can get to, and it'll happen faster. Everybody's going, are we there yet? Well, are you doing no. what you need to do to get us there? Right. So right. really thank you for stepping well, up like that. Amazing. Yes. Thank you so much. And we'll link your book and your classes down with the video too. So people can sign up. Yeah. Thank you. To help. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for staying with us and, and, and uh, being a part again. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Mary, you want me to end? Yeah, that's fine. All right, you guys hit like and subscribe and let us know. Leave questions. I'm going to end the uh, recording.